All right. Yeah, let's get started. Mangi, are you comfortable to lead in prayer? Okay, I can pray. Yeah, sure, Tarun. Go ahead, go ahead. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day as we uh, take this time to learn uh, from your word. Father, may it be your wisdom that leads us. Uh, may it be you that uh, who teaches us uh, as we uh, gather to read your word and learn from it. Lord, we thank you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Tarun. That was uh, rather early where you stay, so that's why I was hesitating to ask. But thank you for leading us in prayer. Uh, we've been learning about interpreting prophecy, personal prophecy, and uh, the basic gift of prophecy is what we've talked about quite a bit and about hearing from God, you know, how our senses pick up God's communication. And we discussed why it is important for us to pick up the information correctly and then to interpret it correctly because then the application will result from uh, the process which we have followed. So all of these things we've been talking about. And then, you know, we went on to dreams. And again, in uh, looking at dreams, we saw how God speaks to our hearts. Okay? And he seals instruction. He speaks through a vision. He speaks through a dream. He um, lets us know what's on his heart. So that's really the point. So all of these ways in which God is communicating, you know, instead of looking at it like, uh, okay, God, uh, tell me what I need to know. So uh, the prophetic gift and our uh, pursuit of God through prayer or worship, because now we've learned that uh, as we engage in prayer, we become more sensitive to what God is saying. So no, our tendency could be that I want to have a greater release of the gifts and I want to have the, um, uh, you know, uh, basically I just want to have information from God. So our attitude can be such that, uh, okay, God, give me, I will do everything. I will worship. I will pray. I will read the word. Now you just tell me what you're doing, you know? So, so it, it's like uh, the dynamics of the prophetic, Minus the uh, sincere sincerity and the reverence. Okay, so that should never happen because ultimately, the prophetic is to flow with the Father. Ultimately, the prophetic is to know the heart of the Father and to be aligned to the purpose of the Father. So you know, that reverence should never go. Uh, in the pursuit of the prophetic anointing, if you are not careful, then you know, we can, we can, it's not something that happens intentionally, but we tend to move in, in that direction if we are not careful and cautious. So the prophetic is more than God give me information. I need to tell somebody what you're up to. You know, it's more than that. It's, it's about flowing with the heart of God, flowing with the purpose of God, you know, feeling what God feels, thinking what God is thinking. So uh, it, th there is the beauty in that when we are uh, flowing in the prophetic anointing as a relationship with God. So just a reminder for all of us uh, who are pursuing the prophetic. And uh, before we get into the class, I just want to encourage the class um, a few weeks back, we had a session where I told us pray, perceive, uh, receive from God and then share it with the rest of us. So we had posted a couple of uh, words here on the chat and uh, on the e-learning e platform, we have other students who listen to these lectures. So one of the e-learning students had uh, affirmed a word that was spoken by, uh, uh, you know, one of the students in this class. So she had written saying uh, that word spoke to me and, you know, it, it touched me and all of that. So you see, there is no limitation. God works outside of our boundaries. 
in uh, in my mind i would have thought okay that word or the words that were spoken should minister to the students in this class and you know if that's done amen praise god but one of the e learning students was blessed by the word and she uh, uh, wrote a comment in the in uh, on the platform so you know god has his way of reaching hearts of people so uh, we we need to let him do his work and it's uh, it's very humbling to know that you know he has uh, put us in christ jesus made us the righteousness of god in christ jesus and here we are you know as vessels of honor uh, uh, receiving the work of the spirit releasing the work of the spirit so you know every time it just humbles us it just causes us to worship him more that wow god is flowing through my life you know so uh, uh, I, i just want to encourage the class to carry that attitude throughout you know, no matter how much of the prophetic is released from our lives at the end of the day we are just a vessel through whom god is ministering okay so having said that just coming back to dreams that we are talking about so dreams are uh, you know some people call it the visions of the night uh, and another very classic thing about dreams is that you know the origin of dreams ecclesiastes 5:3 uh, it says that uh, for a dream comes through much activity so the result of a, uh, the um, dream may not necessarily be a god dream always so we see lots of dreams and if you just uh, study about sleep and you know the activity of sleep you would uh, re- realize that one sees many dreams you know that rem state where you see lots of dreams now not every dream needs an interpretation because even the bible says much activity brings a dream so uh, there among all the dreams the dreams that we really need to interpret are the ones which we have a witness in our spirit that hey this is from god uh, so god is the source of some dreams that we have and those are the dreams which we must look to interpret now can satan can the demons give us dreams yes there are times when demons uh, can intercept okay and uh, if there are open doors then yeah they can intercept they can uh, give us dreams now the difference between the dreams that god gives and the dreams that come from the demonic realm are uh, there will be the uh, there, there will be the outcome of the kingdom of darkness in those dreams so what is that one will one will end up with fear a uh, feel intimidated feel hopeless you know so so what there's a stark difference between what the kingdom of god is all about righteousness peace joy hope faith these are things of the kingdom of god but obviously the kingdom of darkness will deplete the goodness of god's kingdom so demonic dreams will bring hopelessness they will bring uh, you know confusion they will bring uh, all those things you know everything that's negative will come through a demonic dream so that way you could you could assess because i've heard people say hey i had this dream where i saw that uh, you know uh, uh, there was an accident and i passed away you know and i'm getting this dream repeatedly i'm so scared i don't know what to do so what do you do when you get a dream from the demonic realm very simple we are children of god we have been given authority dominion um, through the redemptive work of christ just take authority cancel it if you wake up in the morning with a negative negative dream and you sense this is not from god the source is you know some demonic influence just cancel it because there is power in the words that we speak life and death uh, and life are in the power of our tongue so uh, proverbs 8:21 in the name of jesus i take authority i cancel this dream you know that uh, I, so basically you just take authority and uh, destroy it you know through your spiritual weapons so that's what we do that's what satan wants he wants us to uh, be hindered in our purpose in our uh, walk with the lord so don't let him have more time and more attention in in your life 
okay so uh, that's about the source from where we get our dreams now if a dream is from god then we have to see how to interpret it now we said that uh, you know sometimes dreams are called as the visions of the night when one is asleep one is asleep you have uh, dreams now another very some people don't like to use that analogy because they think that visions are more vivid they are clear uh, and uh, dreams are not so dreams have puzzles they have riddles they have um, you know allegories so many a time dreams are not straightforward you have to uh, unentangle you know what's going on and then you have to come up with the meaning of the dream so you know uh, it it's like that so you have to really work on interpreting a dream <clears throat> and we said that uh, you know sometimes it's uh, easy like when you have uh, some characters in the dream or you have uh, some some action that is going on uh, you can focus in on that and then that helps you come up with the meaning of what god is really telling us so you know it's easy to uh, to interpret but then there are times when the characters i and i also encouraged us that we must never look to sources such as uh, uh, new age books or you know you have uh, other philosophical books where you have imagery and then you try to compare oh i saw a rose in my dream uh, what does a rose mean and then you go looking around you know that shouldn't happen we must always depend on biblical imagery uh, and there is a danger you know when you when you read other other books because you're also opening yourself up to the demonic uh, realm even by just reading and you know trying to uh, you know, play with uh, other other uh, content so uh, if the dream is from god then god is able to give us the interpretation and it is in him the interpretation is in him so just go back research god's word see if you can find that um picture in the bible okay then you would want to interpret it with the help of that picture uh then the other thing that we would say in a dream is that um um okay uh, let me just go by the instructions here because they kind of cover all that you and i would need to know so i i said there have been there are many dreams in the uh, bible people who believed in god had dreams those who did not believe in god you had people like abi malek nebuchadnezzar you know god spoke to uh, the believing and the unbelieving through dreams so god can speak to anyone so when we look at um, when we have dreams and i already said you know there are lots of symbols so use biblical symbolism and um, yeah if there is if you cannot find a reference in the bible then go by the holy spirit because we can manifest the gifts of the spirit you know we can we can have um uh, the discerning of spirits a word of wisdom a word of knowledge that will help us um interpret what we just saw then uh the in a dream this is the this is the complicated thing about a dream that uh, some things can be literal and some things can be very symbolic okay so if for example in my dream you know i saw that my um, i'm praying and my house started burning now the fire can be symbolic symbolic as in if i go back to scripture fire of the holy spirit you know hebrews 13 the last verse there says our god is a consuming fire so uh, god could just be telling me that you know i am sanctifying you as a person it may not even be my house but it may be me as a person my my spirit my soul my body that god is sanctifying and he he is you know filling me through and through by uh, his presence so that can be the interpretation so the fire there is symbolic but you know, there now i cannot interpret this literally that oh i don't know when my house is going to catch fire so i have to be careful so you see when we interpret something in the wrong way the application completely changes so i don't take it literally i really don't take it literally but no it can 
be so that you know i'm dreaming and then i see a particular person in my dream i know this person and you know uh, i i see that they are coming home uh, and so far we've not been on good terms but then you know this person comes and i am actually hosting that person in my home now it could literally mean that there will be an occasion when so and so will come to your place and treat them well okay so literal this individual literally is that individual so you see there are times when there uh, uh, you have to in, their meaning is literal times when it is symbolic and even more complicated sometimes in the same dream you have some literal things and some symbolic things so uh, we really need to depend on god's spirit in order to interpret it now is it possible to interpret dreams uh, now that we see that they can be like you know uh, pretty pretty uh, uh, mixed up in terms of the symbolism very much so if you think about a person like joseph even before the um, you know the indwelling presence of the holy spirit was given by uh, the uh, sacrifice of jesus on the cross i mean think about this under the old covenant he was he was uh, uh, adept at interpreting dreams to the extent that uh, he was brought out of prison he was given a position because of the ability to interpret dreams so we can interpret dreams and how can, how did joseph interpret dreams how did daniel interpret dreams by the spirit of god Okay, because the holy spirit is the spirit of revelation knowledge uh, wisdom understanding and uh, you know he is the spirit of the lord so by the holy spirit you and i can interpret the dreams so you know be confident don't ever think how will i get a meaning of this dream no don't don't uh, go into that but just say lord please help me holy spirit minister to me and then uh, you know god will surely guide us one more thing that we said was that uh, when you when we see things in our dream uh, certain things can be quite um, clear cut uh, and they have a self contained meaning so if i see a beautiful flower and i see that you know there i sense fragrance it's easy for me to understand okay flower fragrance yes that is connected that's a self contained meaning right there maybe the interpretation is god is saying okay you are the aroma of christ you are the aroma of christ uh, so go ahead preach the gospel you know minister to others but if i see something else like maybe um a cup of tea you know a cup of tea uh, and uh, something i am giving a cup of tea to somebody i don't know what it means lord like i i don't see any tea in the bible so now that we have to assign a meaning to it because it doesn't it it can mean anything it can just mean you're hosting someone it can mean friendship it can mean um you know uh, a pause moment it can mean refreshing it can mean um serving it can it can mean so many things but by the spirit we have to assign a meaning to it so uh, search the scriptures if you find something the spirit gives bears witness to you uh, to that symbol then assign it or you know by the uh, power of the holy spirit we can assign it so that's the thing you know we really have to move with the spirit in order to figure out okay is there a self contained meaning here or should a meaning be assigned to it Okay. Then uh, understand the audience. Who is God speaking to? Again, when when I see a dream, it may not be for me. Um, um, and you know, I I have some friends and also family who they see dreams and then they in the morning when I wake up, I would there would be a message. Hey, I saw a dream. You were in the dream, and this was happening. This and so basically, they were getting a dream for me, and they were faithful enough to share it with me. So. the audience can be different each time it could be and usually like you know if you're a leader of the church then god would like to communicate 
uh, to us regarding what we are involved in. So maybe we have a dream about the church. It's a message for the church. Uh, but if I am more focused on my family, God is giving me dreams for my family. So it depends on the situation um, and the assignment of my life. And uh, so I need to figure out, you know, who is the audience. Now, I, I cannot take a dream which is for my family and go and tell it to the church because then it doesn't make sense. You know, They can't apply it. So figure out who the audience is. Um, and then, yeah, the couple of other things that we could uh, uh, do. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Yeah, one more thing I'll just add to this. Uh, we must not try to be overly, um, you know, um, detailed when it comes to dream interpretation that's another place where people get stuck because i remember once one a certain uh, a person came to me and then they were sharing their dream but there were so many 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 details like okay so i saw uh, i was sitting and then there was this fire and uh, they put uh, some oil in it i mean she didn't say all this but i'm just kind of for your understanding, I'm saying, so it was two spoons of oil went into the fire and the fire grew um, by a meter. And then, you know, there was this particular person, he came, he was wearing, uh, you know, on multiple descriptions, uh, there was a purple robe and uh, he was holding this and that. Like, so, and then the, there are so many symbols and I was like, what do I interpret? Like there are too many details in this, in this uh, dream. But, you know, generally, when it comes to dream interpretation, now, again, I can't give you scripture and verse for this, but uh, in my experience and, uh, you know, as I have uh, studied uh, people who interpret dreams, how they do it, uh, I, I figured out that everything doesn't get interpreted. So the main, the main things, maybe there are a couple of main actions and a couple of main characters in the dream uh, and uh, something is happening through them. That is generally helpful to interpret. You know, it's like a photograph. When you take a photograph, you focus on uh, two or three objects in the photograph. In the background, there can be hundreds of things. There can be some flowers. There can be some people talking, somebody doing this, that. But that's not your focus. You're zooming in on the character or the object that you wanted to photograph. So it's like that. So when it comes to dream interpretation, generally it works that way. We uh, interpret the main things that are going on in the dream, and that gives us the meaning of the dream. Now, what again, uh, for before we uh, conclude the dream interpretation, I just want to reiterate now like, if there is a symbol uh, and um, for an intended audience, uh, and you're unable to figure out, you know, uh, who th what this thing resembles, then. Uh, the, follow the same process, go to scripture, try to find out if uh, it is available for you there and what major characteristic does the symbol and the audience have in common. So, you know, uh, let's say the audience is your church and then you're seeing the uh, mighty rain being poured out on your church. So what is the commonality here? Okay, you know, you can I can think of like Acts 2 when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the people. So I make a connection. You know, there's a resemblance. Try to figure out, okay, what is common between the audience and the symbol that I am seeing? And be careful to assign the right meaning because even when we look at uh, biblical symbolism, we need the Spirit of God to help us interpret. Now, the beautiful example and pastor has given that over here is that of a lion. Now, if you see a lion in your dream, um, I, it could mean that God is speaking to us about Satan because uh, First Peter 5, 8 and 9, it says he is like a lion waiting to um, see whom he can devour. So it could be Satan or it can be the Lord Jesus because in Revelation 5, 5, we see that uh, uh, the Lord Jesus is also you know, assigned as a lion. And then you look back at the Old Testament, uh, it's more about him being the lion of Judah. So now, lion, I understand. Now, there are two contradictory, um, you know, uh, resemblances. Which one should I pick? Should I pick 
uh, God? Should I pick Jesus? Should I pick Satan? Okay. So now, if I pick either, the dream will, the meaning of the dream will go in opposite directions. So we have to depend on the spirit of God. And then you know we've been saying the spirit bears witness with our spirit. Romans eight sixteen. So then I go by the Holy Spirit. And another beautiful thing about dreams and visions is that you know uh, though I'm saying you see a lion and all. Our other senses can be involved. So when I see a lion in my dream, you know, I could I could feel a sense of peace and a sense of calm, and you know, like that lion of Narnia or something like that. You know, my friend and all. So then you know that it's the Lord Jesus because He is my deliverer, my savior, all, all that. So I have a relationship. So also the best thing again we say is. The right, the best person to interpret a dream is the one who had the dream. Okay, now one can go and share it to another person, and they can interpret. But uh, nothing like the one who saw the dream, because all the senses were alive and awake when they were uh, having the dream. So it would be good if that person themselves can interpret it, because they also, along with, I saw a lion. How did you feel when you saw the light? You know what was going on. All those senses—it's the person who saw it who could actually share it. Okay, so uh, this is all about uh, you know dreams and symbols and interpretation. Um, then, uh, what kind of symbols can you have in a dream? You can have some divine symbols like you know. There's a whole list here in our books. There can be a sword. Sword means uh, it can be God's word. It can also be a separation. Separation between God and man. You could see a symbol like a burning bush. Burning bush, yeah, brings back Moses to my memory. Uh, presence of God. So, like that, you you see a symbol and you connect it to uh, biblical symbolism. Uh, you might see some materials. Okay? You might see like um, dry bones. So dry bones, okay, uh, goes back to Ezekiel, restoration of Israel, how God made an army out of dry bones. Okay, fine, it it speaks of deadness and all that. Um, so you know materials uh, like that, or uh, golden lampstand. When you see a golden lampstand, it can mean uh, you know there was a golden lampstand in the presence of God. Uh, then again, you can look at Revelation. Know, how there were churches being talked of. So there are many different meanings, but then you depend on God's spirit and then you try to figure out what it means. There can be, uh, uh, you know, creatures, you see like animals, you see birds, there can be a dove, dove represents Holy Spirit, but dove also represents um, in Hosea 7, 11, it talks about the, the gullible, uh, you know, nature of God's people that they are very foolish. Okay, the they are very simple in a negative way. So dove can also represent that. Uh, so yeah, look at all the meanings and then see which one God would want you to assign to what you saw. Uh, you might see a dragon. You might see a serpent. Now serpent is quite clear. Scorpion is quite clear. Like in the Bible, we have uh, you know uh, that okay, it was Satan. So. We, we we would understand right away rainbow uh, god's promise god's faithfulness if you look at genesis you know there you see god sent a promise to noah there can be some gestures that's just could be putting on sackcloth and ashes it's mourning okay so you understand okay that means mourning you're preaching and people are putting on sackcloth ashes in the dream uh, okay they are repenting would be the interpretation um uh, laying hand on another person, it could mean imparting a blessing to somebody. So again, biblical uh, gestures, and then you interpret that as you look at the, uh, you know, what's happening in the dream. There can be certain actions that take place, an angel placing a coal uh, on, on someone's lips. Now you relate that back to the angel placing a coal on Isaiah's lips so that he can... Um, begin his ministry sanctified so yeah then you know you you kind of make that uh, connection then um, yeah potter making a clay pot uh, it's like god dealing with his people israel okay, so that 
would be the understanding when you look at that action. Um, uh, Ezekiel eating a scroll. Okay, maybe you're dreaming, oh, I'm eating a scroll. What does it mean? Basically, Ezekiel received a message from God. It might just mean that God is releasing a message into our spirit. So uh, actions could could mean you know something. So uh, that that's how you would go about interpreting. The, sometimes there are numbers. Okay? There are some significant numbers. Again, we shouldn't get too hung up on it because otherwise, you know, everything becomes about what number is this? How many times did it happen? Two times, three times. You know, focus, zoom in on what the Holy Spirit wants us to zoom in on. Uh, otherwise, you try to interpret everything in it, you lose the actual message. So there can be some important numbers like seven. Seven is a number of perfection. Uh, or you might have the number eight. Eight is a number of new beginnings. Or there can be the number 40, which represents testing. You know, Moses went through his testing. Jesus went through you know, 40 days in the wilderness, fasting, uh, uh, undergoing temptation, things like that. Okay, So uh, uh, again, go back to biblical biblical um, numbers and see what is God trying to say. And usually, when there is a repetition of a dream, you know, repetition is God's way of getting our attention. A uh, Pharaoh also he had he had the same message being told to him twice. Know, through a dream so then uh, it's like a sure short way that god is trying to talk to us so twice a dream being repeated is very significant there can be names characters events uh, in the dream that we might see you might see a joseph um, you might see a daniel now when i look at daniel in my dream it might also mean um, okay daniel is visiting me Maybe you've been praying for wisdom and God is saying, I'm giving you revelation, wisdom. So that's how you interpret okay, uh, what's going on. Some character, some names, uh, some events that are taking place. Now you see Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego being thrown into the fire and you see another person. In, so that's an event. You know, something is happening. Uh, you recognize, okay, maybe in the trial that I'm going through, God is saying, I'm with you. Don't be afraid. You know, you will come out of this fire. Um, you will be okay. So that way. And then again, symbolic colors. So there can be, uh, and you know, God is amazing. He is so creative and uh, so, um, uh, you know, refreshing, uh, not boring at all. Uh, but then, you know, the prophetic and dreams are not for entertainment. But, you know, God has chosen to to use this beautiful way of communicating to us. And, you know, we are blessed by it. We could even have colors uh, in our dreams. So and colors also, again, represent so many things. Purple is a color of royalty. You know, you would see that uh, Esther had uh, like a, a purple robe. Um uh, so purple is, is a, a symbol of royalty, a color of royalty. White white represents purity, righteousness. You know, God will give us white robes. We will have white robes in heaven. Uh, so then go by what it is that God is trying to say through those colors. Now gold, gold is also, uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's a God, it's heavenly. You know, when, when you go by that that color, um, streets of gold, presence of God, things like that. So biblical symbolism, some of these symbols have been taken from, uh, Pastor has given uh, the reference here, basic Bible interpretation, it's one of our uh, reference books also, which we use for um, hermeneutics. So from, that's the place from where we have uh, given these symbols. Uh, but yeah. You know, the more we study the word of God, we become more familiar with what's in there. And uh, sometimes, you know, those symbols are there. And, and Pastor shares his dream here. And I think you would have heard of this dream when we talked about spiritual warfare, believers authority, where uh, in a dream, you know, he had, uh, he saw, uh, he was being attacked by different kinds of snakes. Uh, initially, it was some small snakes. It was easy to just pick them up and throw them. And then there was, um, you know, some other snake that uh, I think he used in his dream. He used some pots to 
uh, throw on it and then just escape from there then he saw a bigger kind of uh, a snake where he didn't know how to deal with it and suddenly he saw some uh, chicken you know chicken uh, live chicken you have their feet tied up you know they they kind of ready to be prepared that those kind of chicken uh, he saw and then he threw it to this uh, really big snake and uh, it got distracted it started feeding on it so he never got the interpretation of this dream but he wrote it down now another beautiful practice is to just write down the dreams um, because if you don't have an interpretation now you can always pray about it and then you know god can give it to you at a later point in time so he wrote it down and then Uh, he had this interpretation at uh, uh, a time when he was sharing in in one of the uh, pastors meetings where he had apparently been reading judges 20 at that time and in that passage you see how god gave israel a strategy to fight against the, their own one of their own tribes you know the Benja, benjaminites so benjamites so uh, strategy you know that that thought came to him oh strategy uh, so each time he saw these snakes in his dream now snakes obviously represent uh, satan demons and he saw different kinds of snakes with different you know you could say it was getting uh, tougher so each one had to be dealt with in a certain way so then he understood oh, okay god is trying to say that we need wisdom and strategy to uh face the enemy so what would be the strategy and as he researched it more meditated on it more you know he recognized that the bible says that uh, the cross is the mystery you know, the cross is uh what god has used to overcome the enemy so the cross is our best strategy you know to overcome the evil one and uh, god has defeated now satan may never have thought that through the cross what can jesus do through the cross he didn't understand but god used this strategy of the cross to overcome the evil one so um that was the you know in in a just the uh, interpretation of the dream which passed ahead so that's a little bit about dreams there's so much more that we can uh, study about dreams and uh, i used to follow this individual called john paul jackson i think many of you probably already know uh, he was mightily used by god for uh, especially in the area of dream interpretation and uh, he has uh, some books and he has some um, recordings which are available even on uh, youtube you could go and listen to it now again i mean i i just want to say that we can listen to a lot of people but then you know we we must be very careful um to hold on to what we know from the scriptures because otherwise you know there's a lot of stuff out there uh, and it's very easy to get derailed so uh, if you're the kind you just want to get a grip on what you've learned right now then i would say go with this uh, practice what you've learned so far um, become stable and maybe at a later point in a year or two you're a little more open to listening to you know people who are practicing uh, interpreting prophecy and uh, interpreting dreams maybe at that point it would be a better better uh, you know time for you to listen to others okay so let me just quickly come to the the chat section here and abinash is saying can you explain a little more about dream which comes from satan and how it comes even to believers so abinash see satan can interpret intercept our dreams most of the time generally it's open doors okay now there are believers there are believers and i've heard you know unfortunate uh, they would share that i'm having constantly i'm having these dreams about you know somebody being killed or somebody being tortured in my family i, I mean it's going on and on and i can't control it so then i i generally i pray with them but then i kind of encourage them about believers authority it's like an open door you know they are not taking authority so satan is able to intercept so that happens okay now this is not to say that to a normal uh, believer who's quite strong in the lord even they can have like a one off here and their dreams which demons might uh, give uh, so but you know a, a strong believer will know that 
oh it's just satan trying to intimidate me and you know they will know how to take their authority and kind of uh, deal with it so abhinash does it uh, answer your question i i uh, said it i said it in short yes yes ma'am thank you so much yeah it does yeah. thank you Okay, great. Yes, thank you, Abhinash. Okay, uh, Anita, uh, she's saying my mother-in-law saw a dream. Uh, in there, my daughter was playing with a lion. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So Anita, uh, daughter was playing with a lion. Now you would need to really pray and see uh, what that means. You know, is it a dangerous thing or is it a um, happy thing? Uh, but from what I sense, I think it's a happy thing. that you know she is uh, learning about god and you know she, she is uh, building her relationship with god is what i would say uh, so yeah again you know lion it can have two different meanings so you have to interpret it correctly okay rose has a, a comment here she says okay great uh, anita uh, pastor how would you know if the daughter you see in your dream is your little daughter or your ministry okay since daughter in the spirit means your ministry when you do when do you appoint the mother in your dream as your little mother or uh, is it the church or sphere of influence since mother in the spirit is the church or the holy spirit i notice that once you appoint an association to certain symbol in your dream god will use it uh the next time around again to speak to you again okay yeah thanks uh, uh, rose for that question and that uh, uh insight there so uh, grace what uh, sorry rose what i would say is uh, um as i said earlier there can be many characters but we really need the holy spirit to help us zoom in on the characters of importance now in this case in this case you are right you know depends on depends on the audience now i thought um anita's mother in law had a dream and the dream was meant to be shared with anita and anita has a daughter so now if the mother in law has understood that the message is for anita i would think that you know and if if anita you know currently does not have a ministry or, or she's not directly involved in the ministry i would say the context is more of anita and her daughter so you know i wouldn't go to the extent of um deciphering the mother in the dream the daughter in the dream and you know the meanings that you have rightly assigned here i wouldn't go to that extent i would just take the simplest meaning that okay uh, anita your daughter uh is growing in her relationship with the king okay or god uh and you know that i i'm sure would bring encouragement to anita's heart and faith that okay wow i need to raise my daughter as somebody who believes in god so it's done its job okay what is the job faith towards god you know um glorifying god a godly life so i would leave it at that so uh, that's how it works rose like we really have to depend on the spirit of god and also determine the audience and the relationship of the audience to the character uh, the uh, you know what is the resemblance what is the connection all of those things uh, now suppose that dream where for for um, a pastor and uh, uh, the pastor is mentoring somebody then yes you know i would look at it more as uh you know god is trying to talk about that relationship of um raising somebody up in the lord okay. so uh, i hope i've answered your question rose does it make sense to you yeah takes discernment and practice yeah you put it really well so thank you thank you for that so i'll just leave uh, the next uh, about 6 minutes open anyone who wants to share your dream or you know uh, an interpretation of a dream we can do that now Yes, sir. Say, please go ahead. So I had a dream last night. Um, things were just being stolen. So when I woke up in the morning, I was trying to just pray and thinking, what exactly 
Yes, let's dream all about. So what I just decided to do was just to pray against any theft, any theft in my life, you know, either in my life personally or in my family. So I just prayed over it and just believed that that was done. Yeah, but, but that was the kind of dream I had while I slept. Yeah, thanks. Uh, say thank you for sharing. And what you've done is correct. So theft, it's uh, quite, you know, clear what, what that action means. Uh, and we see in John chapter 10, you know, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I've come that you may have life and have it in abundance. So, you know, you find a reference there. So thief would be Satan. And you've rightly prayed for any thefts. These thefts could mean... Um, uh, physical in the natural things that, that have been taken away but they can also mean spiritual you know, spiritually when the enemy has stolen our time or he has stolen some opportunities or uh, so whatever the enemy has done in a spiritual sense even that is applicable so yeah anyway you've already interpreted it and thank you for sharing yeah anyone else Ma'am, uh, I, would, I would want to share my dream. Actually, yeah, sure. uh, uh, there was a time when I was thinking, like, uh, how is the debt? <laughs> People are taking debt, and then we pray for the debt cancellation. Like that, that. I had asked you also, like that. So that was there on my heart and mind, like that. So one day I got a dream, like, uh, where, uh, like, uh, I know the person, and that person is... Uh, like uh, getting into a car which is supernatural car and he was saying like come 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 we have to go and see the house like that and uh, it's a supernatural car like it goes zoom like that how we see in the uh, like uh, in the super uh, sci-fi movies like and then uh, i got to know that that person was blessed with house in the coming week uh, last uh, like uh, yeah the coming week, upcoming week then and i got to know like um, like how is that the provision is coming with the promise like that man had a promise he had a dream like uh, where i want to buy my own house and god uh, fulfilled that promise and he actually he took a loan then i was like okay the promise is coming with a loan like that and then slowly slowly uh, as it unfolded like god made a provision to pay that loan also like they don't have to even like toil hard to pay that loan like that. Then it was like clear to me like when God gives promise, He does give provision also. Amen. Thank you, uh, Anita. It really builds faith to know that uh, God promised and He did it for somebody. Praise God. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Abhinash. Please go ahead. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. So my. Doubt is, ma'am, uh, sometimes the dream comes from God and it really speaks to us and sometimes it comes from Satan and it warns us or like that. But sometimes dreams comes which is not even make sense to us. Like, I don't know, and we can't even relate to that with our life. So I don't know, ma'am, I'm, I'm just thinking wrong or what about that? I just want to clarify that. Thank you. Yeah, sure, uh, Abhinash. Like, very good question there. And I actually, uh, this was not even a thought for me, but uh, I was listening to one of the dream interpreters and, you know, that person was sharing. We saw how in Job 33, you know, it says that God uh, gives a dream, a vision. He seals instruction in deep sleep. He seals instruction within a man. So there are some dreams that we don't get the interpretation for. Okay, or we forget in the morning. So what this is what he said. Now I'm still thinking about it. Basically, he said that, you know, sometimes um, the instruction is sealed in our spirit man and our spirit man has received it. But uh, we still don't have, you know, that uh, understanding in the natural. Okay, so uh, all we have to do is just pray. Just pray. And if, if God wants, like, you know, at another point, he can... Uh, bring back the same dream or communicate this message in a different way and you know we will get it from god so uh, our effort should be to find the meaning of it because you know it, it basically like the bible says that uh, what it is the honor of the king or something to to um, to search it out you know it, it is 
uh, something of god to seal a matter but it is the honor of the king to search it out or something so uh, it's like uh, to to research and find out is what god expects from us and we must have that attitude and go after it i'm sure with the help of the word and the spirit whatever we need to know we will know you know this way or that way god will tell us so don't worry like if you didn't understand it or you saw you forgot don't worry too much about things like that just keep it in prayer okay does it help uh, binosh uh, yes yes ma'am thank you thank you so much yeah yeah sure mm-hmm. sure okay okay class i can see a comment and also say uh, has a question but uh, you know you all have a class after this so we can still pick up on this i just have like some portions in understanding the prophetic very quickly i'll go over them so uh, we have enough time we will take up more time to discuss dreams and also have a session of flowing in the prophetic gift okay so i'm wrapping up for now rose could you please uh, share Okay, let me quickly read Rose's comment. Pass to this one. A person was standing in the midst of three lions, but the person was unfazed by the lion and even patted them on the head. The lions are just angry; they were just still. Okay, so uh, Rose, I think it has to do with the Trinity. Uh, it's the Godhead because we know God is three persons uh, uh, in one. So it's God's presence and God's, um, you know, his his. Uh, the way he surrounds us we live move and have our being in him the book of acts so it's about the trinity okay so with that we will wrap up uh, anita can you please pray and close thank you lord thank you jesus father god father we bless your name and give you glory oh lord father almighty oh lord father lord thank you for this precious uh, teaching oh lord father lord jesus in about dreams and visions oh lord father about the prophetic oh lord almighty oh lord father as your children oh lord father you have blessed us with this gift oh lord father almighty oh lord father lord jesus you are so marvelous oh lord father father lord jesus your works oh lord father lord jesus your thoughts are beyond our comprehension oh lord father lord jesus yet oh lord father lord jesus you have interested unto us oh lord father and oh lord father you reveal your will oh lord father lord jesus you want us through dreams oh lord father such as your heart oh lord father lord almighty oh lord father lord jesus that your children oh lord father would grow in encouragement oh lord father lord jesus whatever may be the circumstances oh lord father your oh lord father holy fire covers us oh lord father lord jesus such a privilege oh lord father lord to be oh lord father lord jesus to learn from your word oh lord father lord jesus to ponder upon it oh lord father to experience it oh lord father almighty oh lord father indeed the life in christ oh lord father lord jesus is supernatural oh lord father god almighty oh lord father lord jesus as we learn all of it oh lord father help us oh lord father lord jesus to grow in this gift oh lord father that will be able to glorify and magnify your name oh lord father lord jesus to oh lord father lord as it was with joseph oh lord father lord jesus god was with him god was with him every time oh lord father lord jesus but oh lord father he he would not be able to see in with the which could not be seen with the uh, the circumstances around him oh lord father lord jesus but oh lord father he was faithful to your call he was faithful to your gift oh lord father he was faithful to your ministry oh lord father almighty oh lord father as your children oh lord father we would grow and oh lord father we would be faithful in the ministry that you have granted us oh lord father father we give you glory dada dada thank you for pastor ola father we bless her ola father almighty ola father lord jesus ola father that she would grow in the anointing from ola father lord jesus she would grow in the gifts ola father almighty ola father lord jesus that you would ola father lord jesus show her many more visions and dreams ola father lord jesus you would use her mightily ola father almighty ola father lord we commit her into your hand ola father let her days be blessed in you ola father father bless her with all the blessings oh lord father lord jesus as a child of god oh lord father father your word said oh lord father we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the christ jesus i speak that word in pastor's life oh lord father in the mighty and matchless name of jesus we pray amen amen thank you pastor amen thank you yes thank you uh, anita thank you shri kumar thank you everyone god bless you Yeah we'll we'll connect back tomorrow god bless take care